Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Attorney General, for appearing before us. In response a moment ago to a um, question from the uh, Chairman, you said that uh, terrorists have the same rights as Charles Manson, correct? I said that uh, murderers have the same rights as Charles Manson, and if these people are charged with murder, in essence, that's, those are the kinds of rights that they would get. And terrorists who have murdered U.S. citizens and uh, approach your uh, Department of Justice is they have the same rights as Charles Manson? In the sense that uh, a murderer has the right to go before a jury, uh, get the acts that he's charged with proven beyond a reasonable doubt, Yes. So therefore, Osama bin Laden, in your opinion, has the same rights as Charles Manson? In some ways, I think they're, they're comparable people in some ways. Uh, That's incredible. This is where the disconnect between this administration and your mindset is so completely uh, opposite that of where the vast majority of the American people are, uh, where my constituents and I just have a deep-seated and profound philosophical difference with the uh, Obama administration, the Department of Justice, the leadership of this Congress. This is war, and in time of war, we as a nation have never given constitutional rights to foreign nationals, enemy soldiers, uh, certainly captured overseas. Senator Lindsey Graham asked you this question, and I know you've had time to think about it. You, uh, at the time he asked the question, you couldn't provide him with an example. Could you provide us with an example of when, in time of war, the United States has ever granted a foreign uh, national captured on a foreign battlefield U.S. constitutional rights? Has that ever happened? You're dealing with a situation that is different from anything that we have ever seen before different from anything that we've ever seen before. We try to analogize this to um, wars where there were people in uniform, where you had signing ceremonies that ended declarations on, ba on, on, on battleships in, in you know, Tokyo Harbor. That is not the kind of war that we are facing. And though we try to you know, analogize the tools and analogize the rules, um, they don't necessarily apply mm -hmm. in the same way. What Osama bin Laden is responsible for are both, as I said, and I've consistently said, both acts of war and also criminal acts. And when I was referring to the Charles Manson analogy, that was just to talk about the rights that he had within a courtroom. I understand mm -hmm. that we are at war with Al Qaeda, and that's why we have 30,000 additional troops in Afghanistan. Right. It's but it why we have taken. Uh, all kinds of other measures, some of which I can't talk about in Pakistan. We, we're not fighting this from a law and pre enforcement preventive mode. We are using law enforcement as one of the tools, but we are right. also using but, military means to defeat this which, enemy. Which is, which is why you support the Second uh, Circuit Court's decision in Padilla that the President uh, lacks the authority to detain a U.S. citizen as an enemy combatant on U.S. soil. Uh, I think the courts, it, that, it, that is not clear at this point that the United States has the ability to, as the president tried to do in that case, hold incommunicado and without a lawyer an American citizen on American soil. Uh, what that brief said was that there are other tools that the executive branch has and that it should make use of in order to effectuate the neutralization, the incapacitation of that person, as opposed to simply locking them away and not giving them a lawyer. And right. Again, the, we're talking about American citizens on American soil. Right. But the key is, you said the president has other tools. The president is the commander in chief, and this is where the profound disconnect comes between where America is and where you are in this administration, and where this co leadership of the Congress is. I would disagree you, with the characterization there, there's a that there is a split between there's America a, and the leadership of this administration. Uh, there, there, there really is, because you saw it, I think, in, in the Massachusetts election. That was, this was one of the key issues in the election of Scott Brown, is even the voters of Massachusetts, as liberal and, and different in their philosophical views as they are from my constituents in Texas, even the voters of Massachusetts understand that Osama bin Laden does not have the same rights as Charles Manson, as you have just stated. Is your, uh, your opinion that, that the... they only had the they, same rights within a courtroom. Right. Well, well granting... Osama bin Laden the right to appear in a U.S. courtroom, you are clothing 
Osama bin Laden with the protections of the U.S. Constitution. That's unavoidable and let's, something that you've skipped let, right past. Let's deal with and it's reality. giving constitutional rights to enemy soldiers that is the profound problem, sir. I mean, we talk about a hypothetical that will never occur. The reality is that we will be re reading Miranda rights to the corpse of Osama bin Laden. He will never appear in an American courtroom. But it is that's clearly, a reality. It's, that's a reality. But it's clearly your position and the position of this administration that uh, on a that you believe on a case by case basis that and, and your tendency would be to grant constitutional rights to enemy soldiers captured on foreign battlefields. Has that ever been done before in U.S. history? Well, e at a time of war. Well, I assume that you are a supporter of military commissions. Is that correct? Absolutely. At time of war, yes, sir. I support what the U.S. Supreme Court affirmed when those German terrorists were captured, as Mr. Wolf said, on U.S. soil. They were let off on the beaches of Florida and Long and yet, Island. Even in those military commissions, those people are given constitutional rights. Are they not? Well, they are in a uh, military commission not clothed with all of the protections of the U.S. Constitution. They are treated by the military as enemy combatants captured uh, at time of war. And the question is... But they're not put up as against the wall and shot. They have the ability to confront those who accuse them. They have the rights to lawyers. They have, they have many of the same constitutional rights. Severely restricted rights in the military tribunal is the problem. We're at war. And you don't seem to recognize that we are at war just as though we were at war with the Germans uh, in World War II. Too, but the the uh, the people we're fighting are such cowards. They clothe themselves as women and hide behind uh, children and hide in mosques as they did in uh, in the Gaza Strip as they do in attacking us. And it is the president's responsibility as commander in chief to protect the country. And the president's granted great discretion by the U.S. Supreme Court and uh, as commander in chief deciding when and where to try these people. It was President Roosevelt's decision that the German terrorists be tried in a military tribunal. It was President Bush and not given the full protection of the Constitution. It was President Bush's decision that foreign nationals captured on foreign battlefields not be tried in civilian court and given the full protection of the Constitution because we're at war. And time lost in interrogating these people means lives lost. And it is, the, it is a, uh, one of the principal reasons, actually, when you looked at why Scott Brown won his race, it's not only because the people of Massachusetts opposed the president's health care plan, but because this administration consistently, and here once again today, we now learn that you think Osama bin Laden is, should be given the same rights as Charles Manson in a court of law, and that's uh, just not acceptable to the people that I represent, to the people of America, and it represents a just profoundly different uh, approach that's never been done before in the history of the country. Uh, for what, example, I have, what we have said and what I have said is that on a case-by-case -case basis you make the determination of where you can bring the strongest case. Where will I have the greatest chance of success? There are things that you can do in Article 3 courts that you cannot do in military commissions. You cannot have for instance, cooperation agreements. You don't, that does not exist in a military commission. Um, we have the ability to um, in, incarcerate people for extended periods right. of time. And one only has to look at what has happened through the use of the Article III courts over the course of the past year and to see the plots that we've broken up, the intelligence that we have gathered, there and that has allowed yes, our military to be more effective in the field. Yes, and sir. that cannot and be denied. That well, cannot be denied. It is where facts run into well, everything that you're saying. Facts.